In this section, we want to introduce another concept called hybridization. And hybridization means combining orbitals as shown in this picture. So if we look here, we have in energy, the 2s orbital down here, and the 3p orbitals, the three 2p orbitals of carbon up here. When we hybridize them, we start with one, two, three, four atomic orbitals. When we hybridize them, we form four hybrid orbitals that are called sp3 hybrids because we mixed an s and 3p orbitals. And you'll notice they all have the exact same energy, which is about three quarters of the way up towards the p orbitals. Why? Because three out of four are p orbitals. So the energy is about three quarters of the way up. So this is essentially what hybridization is. And I want to explain a little bit more about why hybridization occurs. I then want to look at the results of what happens with hybrid orbitals. And finally, we'll look at, well, how do you figure out what the hybridization is if you have a Lewis structure? Um, so there's kind of like a bunch of different things going on here. So again, we're going to start with the theory first, and then we'll talk about the um, practical implications in a few minutes. So I'm just going to redraw essentially what you see there on the um, paper. So we have energy, and this is carbon. And basically what we have going on here is we have 2s, 2, 2p, 1, 2. So we have 2s electrons, and we have two of them, and we have the 2p electrons, we have two. So the electron configuration for carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. This is just it written out on the energy diagram. Now, this carbon is known to bind with hydrogen. So hydrogen is just 1s1. So imagine for a second that a hydrogen comes along with an electron, like so. And another hydrogen comes along with its electron, like so. And if we were to draw the essentially the Lewis structure of this thing, what we'd end up with is a carbon with a lone pair, a bond to one hydrogen, and a bond to another hydrogen, like this. So this would be the um, Lewis structure of the thing that bonded of carbon bonding with hydrogen. And it would have a weird geometry um, that we could know if we knew the geometry of these two orbitals. So basically these would be 90 degrees apart because you have a PX, a PY, and a PZ. And then you'd have a lone pair in the S orbital. And that's basically what you would have. So you have this weird thing. Well, if you were to calculate the formal charge of this weird thing, you'd find that carbon wants to have four electrons around it. Count the dots as one, count the dashes as one. One, two, three, four. So it's neutral. And hydrogen is neutral, and this hydrogen is neutral. So what's wrong with this Lewis structure? Well, we need to remember step three of the Lewis structure is going to be fill the octets. Carbon doesn't have an octet. So if carbon doesn't have an octet, this is not particularly stable because carbon is not noble gas-like. In fact, this is particularly unstable. Um, so this molecule, because it doesn't have an octet, is not what forms. So we need a way, both because of the geometry problem, these are not 90 degrees apart, and because of the problem of we don't have a lone pair and two hydrogens, we have four hydrogens, we need a way of explaining that. And one way of explaining that is this process called hybridization. So what actually happens with this, not so much this, it's just kind of in the middle, is these orbitals hybridize. So we get an S and three P's hybridizing. So basically we hybridize an S and three P orbitals. Why one S? Because there is only one S and then three Ps. We don't need any others. If we needed another, it would be a D. But in this case, we're going to hybridize these three, these four orbitals. If we hybridize four atomic orbitals, mix them together, that's what hybridize means, then we're going to get four molecular orbitals. So we get them, and they're about three quarters of the way up in energy. So this is still the same energy scale. 
we're going to get, we abbreviate this SPPP as SP3. So we're going to get these four SP3 hybrid orbitals. How many electrons do we have? Well, we had one, two, three, four electrons from carbon. Remember, the blue electrons are from carbon. The red ones are from hydrogen. So now we draw those four electrons in, all spin up. These orbitals are the same energy, so-called degenerate orbitals, uh, which just means they have the same energy. So we draw in the four electrons, all spin up. Now we have a hydrogen, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. We have four hydrogens sigma bonding with the one carbon. And what we end up with is CH4. CH4 methane, which you've seen the Lewis structure of before, is what actually forms. This is stable. Note that carbon has an octet. As you'll see in a few minutes, it also explains the tetrahedral geometry of carbon using this hybridization theory. And I'll show you that in just a few minutes. So basically, we have these hybrid orbitals. Let's look at an example of nitrogen. So let's look at nitrogen. In the case of nitrogen, what we initially have is a 2s and the three 2p orbitals. And there's a total of five electrons. So the electron configuration of nitrogen is 2s2, 2p3. Well, it's actually 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. These orbitals hybridize. What are we hybridizing? Well, if we have four atomic orbitals, we need four hybrid orbitals. The four orbitals are an s and three p's. We abbreviate this as sp3. When we do this, they're about three quarters of the way up, and they're sp3 hybrid orbitals. And we're going to put in one, two, three, four, five electrons. One two, three, four, five. Now when nitrogen binds with hydrogen, we get one, two, three hydrogens, each forming a sigma bond with the nitrogen. And what we end up with is N with a lone pair, these two, and three bonds to hydrogen. Nitrogen has an octet, and it's got three bonds to hydrogen. This is the stable Lewis structure of ammonia. Again, the shape is explained by this hybridization, which we'll show in a minute. But the take home message here is what are in hybrid orbitals? Well, sigma bonds are in hybrid orbitals, right? These are all sigma bonds that occur between the two hydrogens. So if I were to draw one of them, it would be something like this, where the two electrons are like that, and there'd be four of them a little bit here and there wouldn't be for carbon because carbon would have the other side but anyway this is basically what you have actually for hydrogen it's not a hybrid orbital so it would just be a circle so it'd be the hybrid orbital of carbon interacting with the the 1s orbital of hydrogen in forming a sigma bond so the take-home message is these are four sigma bonds and they occur in hybrid orbitals so sigma bonding pairs are in hybrid orbitals here, you see several sigma bonding pairs in hybrid orbitals. What else is in a hybrid orbital? A lone pair. So in a few minutes, when we're talking about, well, how do you identify whether or not electrons are in a hybrid orbital, we now know that two things are in hybrid orbitals, sigma bonds and lone pairs. Let's look at, one briefly, one more example. Let's look at oxygen. Oxygen is 2s and 2p. There's one, two, one, two, three, four. So oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. We hybridize. We hybridize these s orbitals and these p orbitals, and we get sppp. One, two, three atomic, four atomic orbitals. Excuse me, let me do that again. One, two, three, four atomic orbitals. One, two, three, four hybrid orbitals. We call SPPP SP3. It hybridizes like this. Uh, no, it hybridizes about like this, about three quarters of the way up, SP3s. And there is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. What's it going to bond with? One 
hydrogen. I apologize that that's kind of messy. And another hydrogen. What do you end up with? An oxygen with two lone pairs and two bonds to hydrogen like that. So what's in hybrid orbitals? Lone pairs, sigma bonding pairs. And here's just a few examples. Now this theory here is not something that you're necessarily going to need to be familiar with. However, I think it's important to explain where the hybridization comes from. Um, please note that the other place and probably uh, the other place that this is coming from is the shape. The shape is not well explained by the Lewis theory. So let's take a look at how the shape um, can be explained by hybridization. So again, hybridization is combining atomic orbitals, in this case, an S and three P's, to form four sp3 orbitals. We had combined one, two, three, four atomic orbitals. So we had to make one, two, three, four hybrid orbitals. So however many you combine, that's how many you make, because you're not losing or gaining orbitals, you're simply combining. So in this case, we're showing an sp hybridization. This is the combination of an s orbital that looks like this with a p orbital that looks like this. When you combine these, you form two new orbitals, sp hybrid orbitals. One looks like this, and the other looks like this. So we're essentially adding these probability plots together. When you then combine these two together, you get the linear re arrangement. So if you have an sp hybrid, hybrid orbital, where you have one, two domains with respect to the central atom, you'll end up with a linear geometry. So the hybrid orbitals explain the geometry. Let's look at the sp2 example. We'll also look at the sp3 example. Here, we're combining an s and two p's. When you add those together, you're going to get three hybrid orbitals. One in this direction, one in this direction, and one sticking out at us. When you combine these together, you're going to get these three uh, orbitals that are 120 degrees apart. So if something has three domains, it's going to have the arrangement of trigonal planar, assuming those domains are all um, atoms. Of course, if one is a lone pair, then you have to use the sheet and figure out um, that it's you know bent or angular if one of them is a lone pair. Last case, sp3 hybrid. We have an s and 3p orbitals. If we combine an s and 3p orbitals, we're going to make four hybrid orbitals, one in this direction, one in this direction, one in this direction, and one in this direction, as we add these things together. When we combine these four, it gives us the tetrahedral arrangement. So if something has four domains, you end up with the tetrahedral um, type of arrangement. If you were to have five domains, you'd have to combine an S, three P's, and a D. And this would give you the trigonal bipyramidal arrangement. And if you had six domains, you'd have to uh, combine an S, three P's, and two D's. So let's look at sigma bonds in hybrid orbitals. Here's an example of ethane, C2H6. And it's combining two carbons, which are hybridized, in sp3 hybrids and four uh, excuse me and six hydrogens which are not hybridized because they just have s orbitals remember uh, that hydrogen only has a 1s electron you can't combine an s with no other orbitals right you need multiple orbitals in order to combine them so when we look at this here what we find is these orbitals can overlap and here we have a carbon carbon sigma bond and these hybrid orbitals can also uh, overlap with the s orbital of hydrogen in six cases here. And you form a single sigma bond between this carbon and this hydrogen, this carbon and this hydrogen, this carbon and this hydrogen. So basically, this is a CH3 bonded to a CH3. So this is CH3, CH3. And this is the structure of ethane. So these hybrid orbitals can overlap with other hybrid orbitals as in the case of carbon and carbon, or they can overlap with unhybridized orbitals in the case of carbon and hydrogen to form sigma bonds. Remember that the sigma bond is the bond that occurs between the two atoms.
if we have a multiple bond, which we'll see in a little while in the next section, then we can have pi bonds. But here we only have single, sig, uh, single bonds, so therefore we only have sigma bonds. The other thing to note is there are a total of seven sigma bonds here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So how do we actually count hybridization? Well, it turns out that sigma bonds and lone pairs are in hybrid orbitals. And bonds between atoms always contain one sigma bond. So if there's an atom bonded to another atom, it has to have a sigma bond. If it's a single bond, it doesn't have any pi bonds, but it can't not have a sigma bond. If it's a triple bond, it has at least one sigma bond. It has exactly one sigma bond. So bonds between atoms always contain one sigma bond. So if we combine these two ideas, the same thing that counts as a domain, atoms and lone pairs, also count as hybrid orbitals. So lone pairs are in hybrid orbitals, and the sigma bond, or the first bond to any atom, is in a hybrid orbital. So if we can count domains, we can tell what the hybridization is. So in this case, carbon has one, two domains, the two oxygens. Well, if it has two domains, it has two hybrid, hybridized orbitals. Those orbitals are an S and a P. So your two hybrid orbitals means that carbon is SP hybridized. Let's look at oxygen. Oxygen has the lone pair, the other lone pair, that's two, and the carbon, that's three. One, two, three domains. Three domains means three hybrid orbitals. Well, what are your three hybrid orbitals? S, P, P. We, we abbreviate that as S, P, 2. So however many domains is how many hybrid orbitals you have. Let's look at this example. We have carbon bonded to an oxygen, a hydrogen, and another hydrogen. So it has one, two, three domains. If it has three domains, it has to have three hybrid orbitals, S, P, P, S, P, 2. In the case of oxygen, it has one, two, three domains. So it has three hybrid orbitals, SPP, SP2. So note, three domains, three hybrid orbitals. Also, it's important to, to notice that hydrogen doesn't hybridize because it only has S electrons. Let's look at water. With respect to oxygen, there are one, two, three, four domains. So there's four hybrid orbitals, one, two, three, four. S, P, 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 S, P, 3. Hydrogen, again, doesn't hybridize because it only has S electrons. Xenon, how many domains does it have in this case? Is it X, E, F, 2? 1, 2, 2 fluorines, 1, 2, 3 lone pairs for a total of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 domains, 5 hybrid orbitals. S, P, 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 you've now run out of P's. So the next one is a D. The hybridization here, sp3D. Fluorine has xenon and three lone pairs, or one, two, three, four domains. Four domains means four hybrid orbitals. One, two, three, four, sppp, sp3. So this is how we actually count hybridization in atoms. We look for the number of domains. Then we know that all things that count for domains also count for hybrid orbitals, namely lone pairs and sigma bonds. Therefore, once you count domains, you could tell the hybridization of any atom as we did in these four cases.